Hi, I'm Edward Musio, CEO of Group Harmonics, and I'm going to tell you how to stop the drama and do the work. Is there too much drama in your workplace? In the late 1960s, a psychologist named Stephen Cartman defined what he called the drama triangle. The drama triangle is a set of three interrelated scripted roles that tell us how to behave to create drama. We'll start down here with the persecutor. The persecutor is the mean, nasty person we'll draw with horns here and a pitchfork who takes advantage. He or she is evil, abuses people, abuses resources. Then over here we have the poor, sad victim. The victim, who here is getting hit by a hammer, is helpless to prevent any trouble from happening and is taken advantage of by the persecutor. Finally up here we have our hero. The rescuer comes in wearing a cape with a big smile on his face. He's heroic and he saves the day. The rescuer stops the persecutor from taking advantage of the victim who asks the rescuer for help. You can start anywhere in the triangle and it doesn't matter. Now we know these scripted roles well. We know them very well. Think about it. When you read about Little Red Riding Hood and the Big Bad Wolf, do you ever stop to ask why the Big Bad Wolf chased after Little Red Riding Hood? No. That's what persecutors do. That's what victims do. You know how the story goes. You don't need any more information. That's the problem with scripted roles in the workplace. Scripted roles are not equal to information transfer. In fact, scripted roles are the opposite of information transfer. We work in the information age. Information transfer is equal to work. In other words, when we're having drama with scripted roles, we're not doing the work. Let's take an example of this. Let's say you're a manager and you have two employees. One of your employees comes to you and says, I need your help. The other employee, employee two, won't get me the numbers and the data I need on time every week. I can't do my job. I tried to ask him for help and he was mean and rude. What's happening here? Basically, employee one is saying, I'm helpless. Employee two is persecuting me. Will you help me? As the manager, your natural instinct might be to say, sure, I'll help you. I'll talk to employee two for you. There you go. You're going to be the rescuer. The stage is set for drama. Now what happens? Well, you probably call employee two into your office. You're the manager. And you say to employee two, you better shape up. You better start to do what you need to do or there are going to be consequences. Next thing you know, you've framed employee two as the victim and you as the manager have become the persecutor. What happens next? Employee two leaves the room. Then what? Employee two might turn back to employee one and say, you need to help me. You caused trouble for me with the manager. Now you need to rescue me. Or employee two might say to employee one, you thought you had problems before. Now you're really going to have problems and become an even stronger persecutor. It doesn't matter. We can move the tickets around all over the board all day long. The point is we have scripted roles. We're doing drama. We're not doing work. So how do we get out of this? The trick is when you notice any of these roles come up, you want to immediately start to think, act, and speak as if the role isn't real. How does that work in our initial situation? Remember we had employee two as the persecutor who was not giving the data to employee one when he needed it and you as the manager were going to rescue? How do we do this? The role isn't real. Let's start with employee one. What if employee one is not helpless? Employee one could get the data somewhere else. Look for different data. Ask in a different way for the information. Ask at a different time. What options appear? What if employee two is not evil? What if employee two doesn't have the data, doesn't know how to get it? doesn't know how important it is, has too many other priorities and is too busy. What options does that suggest? Finally, you as the manager. What if you as the manager are not heroic? What if you're not going to be the only person who comes in and saves the day? Who else might get involved? Is there somebody else with different information? Can you encourage them to work it out amongst themselves? What other options do you have? Notice what's happening here. We're talking now about options. Alternatives for problem solving to get the work done. We've moved away from scripted roles and away from drama. So the next time you or someone you work with is starting to act like a persecutor, act like a victim, or act like a rescuer, as quickly as you can, start to think and act as if the role isn't real. See what options present themselves. When you do, you'll be more likely to solve the problem, more likely to do work, more likely to stop the drama.